Hey, deserving listeners, this is chapter eight in our deep dive on neo-Nazis and the rise of neo-Nazism in our current times. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor, and this is the Psychology in Seattle podcast. Who are you, Berto? My name is Umberto Castaneda, and I hunt kiwis, but the fruit. Oh, okay. So in this chapter, I want to start by talking about famous people who are neo-Nazis or Nazi-leaning. And one of the individuals that you talked about in the last chapter or one of the recent chapters was Nikki Haley, who is campaigning for the Republican nomination for the president, I believe, in the United States. And you had mentioned that she had said something during a a town hall event. But let's let's watch the footage first. Um, What was the cause of the United States Civil War? Well, don't come with an easy question or anything. I mean, I think the call- So the first thing is she gets real uncomfortable real fast. Yeah. And doesn't answer very quickly. Yeah. It's like, Kirk, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, uh, well, it's, uh, well, well, you know, it, it, history is <laughs> meandering. There's, There's a lot of details. Ice cream is one of so many foods anyways. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying- Vanilla is my favorite because I favor white. white. white oh uh, God! I, I like I like brown. I like brown. I like Neapolitan. Well, is there, that okay? There's no can brown I, color. Can, can I like strawberry? There is a flavor. Hey, there can, is a flavor called chocolate. But yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> campaign manager, can, is it okay to like pralines and cream? Is that is, is, and, is and that, then the first statement is like, don't come at me with an easy question. Like you know, it's an to make easy a question. You know, it's a joke. It's a joke. You know. Haha, ha, we're well, laughing. But she's saying it's a hard question. Of course, yeah. It's you know, an easy fucking everyone question. Everyone knows it's impossible to answer that. Yeah. It's one thing if you're being asked that at your dissertation for your PhD program in history or yeah. something. You're being asked, obviously, and you know, is it a gotcha question? Well, it shouldn't be. No. But apparently it is. Yeah. It should have just been like. But that's the state of affairs right now. Um, what was the cause of the United States Civil War? Well, don't come with an easy question or anything. I mean, I think the cause of the Civil War was basically how government was going to run, the freedoms and what people could and couldn't do. What do you think the cause of the Civil War was? So just a side note, the audience, there's people behind her at like this town hall event, supporters of hers, I assume, who are also smiling uncomfortably about this question which is bizarre and uh you you have this thing where it's like okay i gotta come up with an answer well you know you know it's it's really about freedoms and what the government can and can't do about freedoms already you're thinking well okay well do we see where we're heading here because what freedoms are we talking about well so (laughs) the context of this is that there are right-wing and racist individuals in the united states and i suppose around the world that will rewrite history in a way to soften the reality that it was about slavery and that the South, the Southern states were going to war because of slavery, because they right. wanted to own humans. And they will soften it by saying it wasn't about slavery, it was about states' rights, right? Right. So then they go down that whole conversation. And then the topic sentence to the answer is it's about how much power does the government have? This sort of thing. Okay, I suppose in the same way that like, what is your stance on Charlie Manson? Right. I suppose you can say, well, let's talk about gunpowder. And well, let's like, talk about how sharp knives are. Because, you know, that's really what it, no. no. Yeah, you're like, Berta, what were the concentration camps about in, in Germany in World War II? And I said, you know, there's a thing about running factories effectively yeah. and how efficient you can make, like, what? Yeah. I mean, I think it always comes down to the role of government and what the rights of the people are. And we, I will always stand by the fact that I think government was intended to secure the rights and freedoms of the people. It was never meant to be all things to all people. Government doesn't need to tell you how to live your life. They don't need to tell you what you can and can't do. They don't need to be a part of your life. They need to make sure that you have freedom. I've been in situations mildly similar, similar to this. And 
you know, she looks comfortable, but she could be terrified right now on stage. And sure. And you go on stage and you have your handlers and they're like, make sure you, and you're, you got your, your head is swimming. And yeah. it's a, you know, she's standing in the middle of dozens of people who are asking her apparently tough questions, like how did the civil war, <laughs> and, and, and they did not prepare her for this question. And so her brain glitched, you know, if, if she had time, she probably would have said something closer to slavery. But I guarantee you an, another confused person that's not oriented like often the GOP members are would not have had this weird response. Yeah. They would yeah. have had like some other, this is a specific association that she is making yeah. based on her worldview. This is, I, that's what I think. I, I think. I don't think you're being too charitable. I think you're right. It just sounds charitable because in the end, again, if you ask me, oh, what's the name of your favorite song? And I just am on stage and I blank because I'm nervous. The one thing you can surely expect me not to start saying is, yeah. well, I just think sometimes murdering people is fine. And if you just stab them enough, Berto, what, what are you saying? Oh, it's because I got nervous. What? Yeah. No, it, because I got nervous might be why I said my favorite song was a Nickelback song or something. <laughs> you know, like, let's be real. Well... Talk about gaffes. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I don't know if there's more to this. What do you want me to say about slavery? Next question. So the guy gives her the opportunity for a layup. He brings up yeah. the idea of slavery as a topic that might be related to the answer to this question. And then her response is, what am I supposed to say about slavery? This morning, Haley struck back at concerns over those remarks. Everybody thinks that the Civil War is about slavery. It was more, what's the bigger issue of it? So if it required clarification of saying, yes, the Civil War was about slavery, I'm happy to do that. But look, I know it very well. I'm a Southern governor. I fought and, and took down the Confederate flag in South Carolina. I am very aware of what that is. But for us to move forward as a country, what's the lesson of it? And the lesson is every person deserves their freedom and we have to always fight for it every single day. But that would have been a fine answer. Well, Civil War was mostly about slavery. And the lesson is every person deserves freedom and we have to fight for it every single day. Ba -ba -bam, nailed yeah. it. Right. It, 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 even her answer isn't <laughs> emphasizing slavery enough. She could have said, OK, I, I realize I fucked that one up. And obviously it's about slavery. And and obviously, it's the opposite of what I was stating in addition to that, because if the government hadn't interested, like... Yeah, yeah, but but <sighs> she's defensive. So like, if you want me to, if She didn't even say, it. everyone <laughs> thinks it's about slavery. She doesn't even say, I think it's about slavery. And then she says, if, you, if want. you want me to talk about slavery, we can talk about that. Now, I will say, though, that her response, if I'm understanding it right, which I can't really, because I don't know what's in her head, but if I'm reading it right, that she was really stupidly concentrating on three bullet points. And, you know, I think another factor is that politicians and any pundit, any political pundit is living in a, a world of constant attacks from whatever side, whether that's justified or not. And there's a general defensiveness that I imagine people like her and people on our side will have when they detect a public question from what they perceive to be the enemy, you know, a sort of a suspicion or something, you know? So, you know, that's another p potential factor. It still doesn't <laughs> excuse well, again, it. Yeah. But, but, but my point is, is that I think that she potentially really nailed the response because, you know, she slips in the Confederate flag bit and she does mention slavery and she, and she, and she matches what her response was to the slavery issue, kind of. Well, she, she omits the government shouldn't interfere part. Right. She has a good team and she's, you know, pretty good at, at spinning things. Right. It just, it feels like, again, like one of these, oh, okay, let me clarify. Look. If you need me for some reason to say that murder is not okay, well, I mean, I could say it. I could say whatever, you know. But uh, again, you know, I stand by the fact that uh, children are the future, <laughs> and like, that's the kind of response we got there. It's like I will if I will say whatever you need me to say to right. cover this up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> if you just want me to say slavery, I'll say slavery. Is that sure? Fair? Does that make you happy? Uh, are you happy now? What, what do say? you want me to say about it? So let's go to a, a, a lesser controversial topic and talk about Kanye. I could say anti-Semitic things and Adidas can't drop me. Now what? 
Now what? Uh, I mean, I right around that time, I deep dove on all his all the videos. I I was uh, a mix of disbelief and and complete belief because, and we talked about Kanye and Ye over the years. Anyone tracking the progression could have seen not necessarily that he was necessarily going to say anti-Semitic things, but that things might get worse and worse for him in in his mental health. That said, it was still a whole extra level of like lighting yourself up on a live stream. Like, yeah. I was in, in shock, even though I was like, okay, I guess we saw things like this coming, but what? Yeah. And apparently, according to reports, he's been spouting anti-Semitic things behind the scenes with dozens of people who have all settled out of court and had NDAs signed. Because the narrative is like, oh, well, he's gone crazy as bipolar. Well, I'm here to tell you that people with bipolar aren't They're inherently anti-Semitic. <laughs> right. So it, it's something else. It's probably something that's exacerbated by his symptoms. I mean, it's unbelievable. When you are on Alex Jones's program and he sounds like the reason, like the voice of reason, you yeah. know that you are the furthest away from okay. Right, let's, let's watch more. Here. Earlier this month, Ye was suspended from Twitter, where he has millions of followers after tweeting that he was going to go, quote, Death Con 3 on Jews. Exactly. So just reading this full tweet, and again, it's likely he was symptomatic. That doesn't excuse what he is saying. You know, if I open up the DSM and go to the bipolar symptom <laughs> criteria, it doesn't say anti-Semitic you know, anti view, viewpoints. But he says, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going death con three on Jewish people. So that's like a play on death con, which is yeah. from the military or war games, the movie. I don't know if that <laughs> yeah, was fi <laughs> fictional or not. Yeah. Uh, I'm going death con three on Jewish people. The word death. Like, yeah. The funny thing is I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew also. You guys have toyed with me and tried to black something. Does it make any sense to you what he's saying? I mean, on the surface, sure. On the surface, it's he is lashing out at a lot of people that he's upset about, grouping them together as Jews and saying, ah, I'm going to basically, you know, grab lawyers, grab the media, grab whatever I can to no holds barred go against these people. And by the way, you can't call me anti-Semitic because, uh, you know, I'm from, my ancestors are from Africa, Jewish people are sort of from the region. So, and actually we're more mistreated. So anyways, we're the Jews. So, so it's not a metaphorical thing saying no. that like with uh, John Lennon's song that, women are the n-word or what was that song he wrote women are the n-word of the world yeah yeah it's not a figurative thing he's actually is saying black people are all jewish people yeah yeah so this is i remember at the time reading into this whole philosophy like it is an actual philosophy that his corner of the weirdness of the world holds which is that either they are literally jewish or they are the more legitimate folks that should be called and or treated as the Jewish population. It seems like for some anti-Semitic folks, they seemingly have a love-hate relationship with Jewish people. They don't just hate, they obviously hate, but they also love, they're like obsessed, mm -hmm. they elevate. And this is in that camp, I don't know, but to say, I hate Jewish people or, or whatever he's saying, yeah. he's going to go death con and he has this, you know, all the problems in the world are due to Jewish people. And yet I'm black and I'm also Jewish or I'm from Jewish people. Or so, you know what I mean? It's a, yeah. it's a, it's like they're obsessed. And that's part of that fascist criterion that Umberto Eco put forth regarding the enemy is both weak and strong. <laughs> the enemy is both weak and strong. Right. Umberto Eco. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's the best joke you've said in a long ass time. But I mean, as, as, as and you said some good ones. That, that, that was a really good one. It's hard to know, of course, but it looks this way for some people who are anti-gay people. They will have their oh, right. whole life and personality centered around being anti-gay, yeah. and yet they spend a lot of time consuming media yeah. and thinking and fantasizing about gay people. Also, people who are anti-black. There's a lot of people who, I don't know, but 
they are obsessed with their racist point of view, and they also seem to just revere black people like they're these special creatures you know what i mean i've done this myself not obviously hating black people or uh but with people that i or uh, things that i dislike where i also have at times had this like unhealthy obsession yeah, i worry about you i mean <laughs> I, I, I have and i, I it's, it's my point of view i don't think it's yeah. a mystery because i've said it on the air and off that i don't think it's healthy yeah like yeah I, you're probably right yeah 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 <laughs> Uh, let's watch more. In one, he plays off the false anti-Semitic belief that Jews control the world's financial system. I prefer my kids knew Hanukkah than Kwanzaa. At least it will come with some financial engineering. Uh, the tricky thing about anti-Semitism for a lot of people is that it is subtle and insidious. Did you see that interview with Tucker Carlson? Oh, yeah. What did you think of it? First, I, just, I, I, I was disgusted from the beginning because... Carlson is using him on top of obviously Kanye holding some horrible beliefs. The guy's also not well entirely, and Carlson's just using him for propaganda. And it's just the whole thing was disgusting. But that point right there is is sort of what you were indicating too. It's like, well, you know, they they have all these great little ceremonies, and they they uh, I like that they learn stuff and they teach their kids. So I mean, I would like that. Right. Let's watch more. This past weekend, members of a neo-Nazi group unfurled banners about the 405 freeway in Los Angeles, one of the nation's busiest highways. Other images show the demonstrations giving the Nazi salute. I think we are seeing a spot. So, yeah, the context is that this was during Trump's uh, presidency. And when you have uh, the kind of things that Trump was saying, which we'll get into later, and you have Kanye saying these sorts of things and others then it emboldens the everyday sort of person, the grassrootsness of it, if you will, to show themselves yeah. as these people are. They're in public, California, with banners saying, Kanye is right about the Jews, and they blur out something, something else. God knows. If they kept got Kanye is right yeah. about the Jews, God knows what they blurred yeah. out. And, and there's an American flag, of course. It's tattered. And, and it, you know, it... I remember when this happened, it was every once in a while this happens. And of course, it's been happening more and more as I've been doing the deep dive that any Semitism is alive and well. And I, I just, it's just fucking bizarre. <laughs> it's just, yeah. it's so weird, you know, and all of our deep dives on cults and religion and IBLP, it, it just seems like everyone is into some stupid ass conspiracy theory or belief system cultish organizations you know because people yeah. don't just emerge into any semitism on their own it, there's a whole rabbit hole on the internet and before the internet it would be conversations or communities or newsletters or something dog whistling by politicians and it, it just seems like it's never ending and how do we combat that? It's impervious to evidence. It's impervious to conversation. For the rest of time, for as long as humans survive, we're going to have a percentage of <laughs> humans that are anti-Semites. It's been going on for centuries. So you, ha you have a group of friends, and then one of the friends one day does something ridiculous or silly, and then everyone starts making fun of them. 50 years later, even though that, that friend never again did that thing, they will still call him by that nickname or that thing. And if they lived to be 6,000, they would still call him. I think, unfortunately, to the Jewish community and, and, and other communities in different ways, something similar happened where early, early in history, they, they were afflicted in ways which then got carried from generation to generation to where people just thought it was fine to be like, yeah, well, the, you know, the Jews, you know, well, they're the problem. And well, then it, it got inherited and transferred yeah, from cultures it, to cultures. In and those times, it makes sense. It's horrible. But there's no, they probably can't even read back then. Oh, Hunter. no, but I'm saying that that percolated through every generation all the way to yeah. now. And then you have yeah. actual news outlets and the internet, and you have the ability to actually talk with a variety of people in your country, yet you still have it, you know? Like a peasant living in uh, rural Germany 500 years ago that has never met a Jewish person. I mean, what's that person going to do about what they've been taught? So it's horrible, but, but now, today... 
What's wrong with people? So in, in Colombia, when I was a kid, uh, we would always make fun of this group of people in the south of the country called Los Pastusos, because they came from a, well, not because, they came from a part called Pasto. Pasto means grass, but it would be called Los Pastusos. Like pasture. Yeah. And the joke was, well, Los Pastusos, are, they're dumb. They're always dumb. They're, they're like, uh, it's like the Polish people jokes, but mm. that was, yeah. And I had never necessarily met someone from there, or if I had, I didn't know it or whatever. I didn't know why we were making fun of them, but that was the punchline to many jokes. And probably would have kept going on if I didn't, you know, like grow up and learn something. But like, that was just cultural. So, Berto, let's take a break. The rest of this episode will just be for patrons of the podcast. And the rest of this episode is going to be about a lot of things, including detailing every single racist thing that Trump said. Mm. I spent a lot of time looking into the exact quotes. It took I'm sorry. A, it took a <laughs> while because each one of these quotes had thousands of news stories and yeah. YouTube videos and nowhere was it all in one list. And also there's a lot of people paraphrasing what Trump would say, right? Right. And I don't trust that, even if they're well-meaning. Also, I want to go into Marjorie Taylor Greene's space laser controversy. Yeah. We're also going to talk about Tila Tequila. Did you know that she oh, was? Oh, yes. yes. A and we're going to talk about Martin Luther, the priest in the 1500s of Lutheranism and the Protestant. We're going to talk about Mel Gibson mm. and the writer of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Fantastic Mr. You know, Roald Dahl. Yeah, Roald Dahl. Dahl, 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 Dahl. Wait, isn't there an actor named... The guy we like, Rom Dahl, Ronald Dahl, Rom, Romnald, Romnald, something. Domnal Gleason. That one. <laughs> <laughs> Romnald. Uh, so Dumbs. also Coco Chanel, oh. Henry Ford, the British royal family. So we're gonna talk, you know, the patron zone about all of that. So if you want to hear that, become a patron of the podcast by going to Patreon.com. Otherwise, please, truly take care of yourself because you deserve it.